It's uh, Bruce Howarth from 1969 Ford Mustang Racing. Um, today I'll be showing you a brand new Blue Thunder Ford 302 IDA Weber Manifold and comparing it to the Pro Comp Electronics, which is also sold under the Speedmaster 79 uh, IDA Weber Manifold. So uh, thank you for joining. Let's get to it. So um, we have a Blue Thunder 302 IDA uh, Manifold, brand new still in the plastic. Um, the quality is very good, uh, the casting is very nice, everything looks really good. Uh, and then we have a uh, Speedmaster 79 IDA web manifold. Now, these can be purchased separately. Uh, this is the PE part number, which means it's a Procom Electronics version. So if we actually have a close look at the manifold, you can see that it doesn't have the additional aluminium that the uh, version with the stack injection system does. Um, this actually part here was pushed through with the finger. This part here was pushed through um, with a screwdriver. So you can see that it's actually very close on the casting. Um, also, when I got the manifold new, I was literally able to push through here with my finger. Um, these marks you can see in here are where I've actually tried to uh, tidy it up with an actual burr. I'll just flip the manifold over. So we can see it has um, the vacuum ports drilled into the manifold. It doesn't come with the bottom plate as well. Uh, if we actually look at the casting, we have casting flash here, um, tapped fittings, it comes with the nuts. Uh, if we actually look at the ports here, so the water jacket port, as you can see, um, I've actually had to open this up. Um, it's a very, very rough casting. If you actually look in the ports there, you can see the actual quality of the cast material. Um, I've got a large lip here as well. I've got rough casting in here. Um, this port, as you can see as well. So there are a lot of issues with the actual casting quality. Um, this is probably fine if you're looking at running it on a um, fairly low power stock 302. Um, but for any decent application, this manifold requires a lot of work. And obviously with the fact that uh, you can push through it in the finger in a few spots, and if you actually try to clear up the casting flash, you'll go straight through. As you can see, that's where it actually went through with uh, the finger. So, um, not too impressed. And it is quite clear that uh, this manifold does appear to be a copy of the Blue Thunder. So, um, what I'll do is I'll stop it here. I'll open up the plastic, we'll pull out the Blue Thunder and have a good look at it. This is the uh, Blue Thunder IDA manifold. As you can see, um, it's actually got um, some lovely CNC machining around uh, the neck for the carburetor to fit on. Um, there is a little bit of a lip on the front side, um, but as you can see, it's actually quite a nice casting and there's a lot of material there to work with as well. Um, it also comes with the actual hardware for your um, uh, throttle mount so that obviously mounts to the center here. We've got some nice hardware nice quality all in plastic um, The threads are nice and clean If we actually uh, turn this manifold over you can see that it actually comes with the base plate installed They actually put in the instructions take it off clean it and seal it um, You'll also notice that um, the port castings are quite nice as well. So there is uh, a little bit there to clean up um, obviously I will be uh, port matching this to the AFR cylinder heads it's going on um, but as you can see in general the casting seems a lot nicer uh, especially the water jackets as well so we have um, a really really nice manifold um, same thing from a front end perspective here you can see that there's actually a fair bit of work in the casting to ensure that we actually have uh, really good flow through here we also have a water fitting for the top so that's quite good so you can see there that'll actually work well with the temperature sender um, we also have our bypass hole here as well, which is good. Um, we have multiple sender locations here. So we have one here as well as another one here for the water jacket. We have a plumbing fitting for uh, vacuum because this is plumbed vacuum plus two at the back as well. Looking at the back of the manifold, we actually have a uh, temperature sender that you can mount for the rear water temperature in your engine block. So we actually have um, this hole here where the rear water jacket on the Windsor head is. Um, there is no crossover. It actually just runs through to this fitting here So if you want to install a temperature setting in the rear in the block to look at uh, cylinder temps front and rear on the engine um, 
very nice finish, very nice manifold, um, not quite expensive as compared to the uh, Speedmaster 79. And in a second, I'll flip it over and we'll have a look at the actual port sizes. The basket here is a Felpro uh, 1262S3. Now, the S3 is a steel core laminate, so what it means is that um, with the normal 1262, which is the Pruno seal, there's no steel laminate. And over time for the heat cycling, they actually tend to deform around the water jackets. So um, the 1262 is the centered gasket. Most people use the AFR 205 heads, but they have issues after a time with the heat cycling between the steel block and the aluminum heads and the water jacket distorts. Um, with the S3, I find that this actually is a used gasket that's been removed off an engine that was run. Uh, it was run for about a year on uh, a circuit engine. And as you can see, there's actually no distortion because the steel core laminate. Uh, the other thing as well is that because it's steel core laminate, I'm able to run a burr around the inside, open these up just a little bit so that um, there's no issue with the gasket overlapping the AFR 205 head, which is quite common on small block Fords. And if I put the gasket here, so as you can see, there's actually a fair bit of material that needs to uh, be removed to open up these heads to um, the AFR 205. Um, the good news is that with this casting, there is a lot of material. Uh, and obviously we have a very short radius bend here uh, and we don't need to open it up further down. And there actually is a lot of material in this space here uh, between the port and the head. So we don't have the issue we had on the um, Speedmaster 79 where any removal of material or even uh, a good push with the screwdriver goes straight through the jacket. So um, once the current intake manifold comes off the car, um, these will be mounted on the head, these will be measured up um, and then opened up to match. Um, the idea is that with some uh, 48 revers, we're running some 44 millimeter chokes. Um, that should put me right around uh, where I need for torque as well as uh, peak horsepower. So it's sort of a balancing act with webers between um, butterfly size and venturi size for um, maximum torque versus maximum horsepower. So uh, all in all, a very nice manifold. Um, needs a bit of work to make it work. Um, I'm not going to worry about opening up the plenum at the moment. Uh, but generally a lot happier with this manifold than with the uh, Speedmaster 79 version. Note about this manifold as well is that um, none of these holes are slotted. So they've actually all been uh, recessed machines. They've got uh, a little recess for the washer so everything sits nicely. So you can run um, studs or bolts. On the Speedmaster version, they're slotted. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, this has been an unboxing of a uh, Blue Thunder Modern 302 Windsor IDA manifold. Thank you.